Hey everyone and welcome back to Outta Here Baseball. In this video, we'll be doing our power rankings and awards favorites for the month of June. We're halfway through the season now, and there's not much need for an intro here. So let's get right into the rankings with awards favorites to follow. In 30th, we have the Baltimore Orioles. After last season, it seemed like there are no place to go but up for the O's. But no, they've gotten worse. They won just six games this month, but two of them were 13-0 wins against the Indians. So, I guess that's a positive? 29th is the Detroit Tigers. Not to be outdone by Baltimore, the Tigers won just 5 games this month. Their pitching hasn't been as good as it has been previously, but they've had no help from the offense, which is now the lowest scoring in the majors. In 28th, it's the Kansas City Royals. Poor pitching with a subpar offense sums up the Royals. But they lead the majors in stolen bases, which I'd say is exciting to watch at the very least and Whit Merrifield was named an All-Star, so they should trade him while his value is this high. 27th is the Toronto Blue Jays. In his last 7 starts, Aaron Sanchez has allowed 37 earned runs in 30 innings, good for an ERA over 11. The young guys on offense will continue to develop, and that's about all you can ask for from this team. In 26th, we have the Miami Marlins. They've won some close games, and as a result, the Marlins may not lose 100 games this season. I mean, they're still pretty bad, but they've been better than expected. 25th place, it's the San Francisco Giants. They're still old, and they're still at the bottom of their division. The trade deadline this month will give them a great chance to retool, so hopefully they can bring in some younger talent. In 24th, it's the Seattle Mariners. They'll continue to hit homers, even after dealing Jay Bruce and Edwin Encarnacion this month. They've fallen well out of playoff contention, so I think the biggest question surrounding this team is who will be dealt next. In 23rd, it's the New York Mets. Geez, where to begin? Management and players yelling at reporters, blowing leads just about every game, and the trade to acquire Robinson Cano and Edwin Diaz is looking worse and worse each day. At number 22, we have the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox are in a good spot. They have an outside shot at the playoffs, have a true ace in Lucas Giolito, an emerging star in Yoan Mankata, and they still have a loaded farm system. In 21st, it's the Pittsburgh Pirates. Halfway through the season, and the Pirates are hanging around in the playoff race, despite not having a playoff caliber roster. In other words, it's a typical year in Pittsburgh. In 20th, it's the Cincinnati Reds. If we were to base these rankings off run differential, then the Reds would be pushing for a top 10 spot. The pitching has held up, and the offense is coming around, so maybe they'll still be in the playoff hunt come next month. 19th is the LA Angels. Any team with Mike Trout is going to be at least somewhat competitive, but we'll see if they can keep pace with the other teams in their division in the second half of the season. And we wish the best moving forward for the organization and all those affected after hearing that pitcher Tyler Skaggs had tragically passed away on July 1st. Moving on to 18th, and it's the San Diego Padres. Like the White Sox, I think the Padres are a promising team with a playoff chance, but are still a year away from truly competing. Though with Manny Machado heating up, maybe this team remains in contention. At number 17, we have the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals find themselves still in contention in a deep NL playoff race. Whether or not they make a big push comes down to if their offense ever starts clicking. In 16th, it's the Arizona Diamondbacks. They may not have many big name players, but the D-backs are above average on both sides of the ball and have held their own against the favorites in the National League. Our biggest risers at 15th, the Washington Nationals. The Nats have fought back and are now right in the middle of the playoff hunt, thanks in large part to Max Scherzer pitching into Cy Young contention and Anthony Rendon performing at MVP level. In 14th is the Cleveland Indians. The Indians have enough pitching depth to keep them in games, but will need to add players on offense if they really want to make a playoff push. July is a critical month for most teams, but especially so for the Indians. In 13th, it's the Philadelphia Phillies. They lost Andrew McCutcheon for the season, but got a resurgent Jay Bruce in his place. They lost 7 straight, but then swept the Mets. They've taken the good with the bad, but will need a bounce back month to keep the fan base happy. 12th place is the Colorado Rockies. The offense remains their biggest strength and could carry them into the playoffs, but they don't have the pitching depth of the other NL contenders, especially with Herman Marquez struggling of late. In 11th, we have the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers are definitely a good team, with lots of quality players, 
but a negative run differential and a lack of depth in comparison to the Cubs and Dodgers are concerning factors. In 10th, it's the Texas Rangers. Joey Gallo may have been injured for a while, but the Rangers have remained in contention and find themselves as legitimate playoff contenders as the trade deadline approaches. At number 9, it's the Oakland Athletics. The A's have been about as good offensively as the Rangers, and have been better on the mound, which is why I think they have a better chance at the playoffs, but both teams will have to fend off the team in 8th, the Boston Red Sox. Their pitchers have a track record of success, and the offense has been very good. I don't think anyone would be shocked if the Red Sox made the biggest push in the standings this month. 7th place is the Chicago Cubs. They're getting production from all their star players, and I give them the best chance of taking down the Dodgers in the National League. Also, Cole Hamels has an ERA under 3 over 29 starts in a Cubs uniform. In 6th, it's the Atlanta Braves. They've been one of the hottest teams in the league and boast a very deep lineup. I'm still not sure who will be in their starting rotation come September, but they've emerged as the favorite in the NL East. At number 5, we have the Tampa Bay Rays. No baseball season is complete without talk of the Rays relocating, and a split season in Montreal sounds very intriguing. Despite slipping in the standings a bit, the Rays are still a top-level team. Number 4 is the Houston Astros. In the top-heavy American League, the Astros' goal should be home field advantage in the playoffs, and with George Springer back in the lineup, they should be able to do just that. In third, it's the Minnesota Twins. Another month in the books, and the Twins remain one of the biggest stories of the season. They have the most homers in the majors, and have the best run differential in the AL. Second place is the New York Yankees. They have a top-notch offense with DJ LeMahieu of all people leading the charge. Their depth and potential to be even better as players come back from injury is what puts them in the second spot. And at number one, it remains the LA Dodgers. They have the best offense and pitching staff in the National League, and have continued to fire on all cylinders for three straight months. With the trade deadline approaching, it'll be scary to see how they improve an already stacked team. Now on to the awards favorites, beginning with Rookie of the Year. Pete Alonso is still the NL favorite, as he could end up hitting 50 long balls as a rookie, though Mike Soroka and Austin Riley have been great for the Braves so far. The AL race is far less exciting, with Brandon Lau still in first, but I'll give John Means of the Orioles second place, with Spencer Turnbull third. The NL Cy Young race is still Hunjin Ryu's to lose, as his ERA is over half a run lower than second place Max Scherzer. Luis Castillo and Zach Greinke are essentially tied for third. The American League has two favorites in Justin Verlander and Lucas Giolito. JV remains in the top spot and ranks first in batting average against, whip, and innings pitched, and I'll give third place to Mike Miner, followed closely by Charlie Morton. NL MVP is still a battle between Cody Bellinger and Christian Yelich. The race is closer now than in previous months, but Bellinger gets the edge due to superior defense. Josh Bell is a solid third place. In the AL, Mike Trout has begun to run away with the award, but the battle for second would be between Alex Bregman and Jorge Polanco right now. Should George Springer and Joey Gallo bounce back strong from injury, they will re-enter the conversation. So that concludes our power rankings and awards favorites for the month of June. Do you agree with these rankings? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell icon to stay notified on all the latest Out of Here Baseball content. Thanks for watching.